Years ago, all these fields belonging to Chieza Rupedo would mainly be dedicated to corn for Saza or Ischuala, a thick porridge that serves as the country's staple food. It's now all small grains. The change in crops has been easy, Rupedo says. I prefer small grains because this place is hot. There is less rain, which is suitable for millets. Plus, we discovered that small grains need less labor to plant them. But not everyone prefers the small grains, which some call traditional grains. Vangelis Artatos is Zimbabwe's deputy minister of agriculture. Some people have been resisting, and that's that's cr- also correct because you know they haven't grown traditional grains for many years, and now you're trying to influence them to grow. So there's naturally, as human beings, we are going to resist. But like I said, when you see your next door farmer producing and thriving, you yourself you make that decision and say, you know what, the government what it's saying is actually correct. Let me try. According to the Zimbabwean government and the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, small grain yields are triple those of corn, the country's staple crop, and are more nutritious. Scientists say that with climate change reducing rainfall and causing recurring droughts, farmers should move away from corn. Zimbabwe used to be called the food basket of Africa. Zimbabwe is, um, you know, is one of the areas that we consider the center of origin for sorghum in the Southern African region. And because of the diversity and the hard work and the investment that the government is making in this area, we thought that Zimbabwe is a good example and a good uh, place to start with launching International Year of Millets in Africa. And Rumushita has Zimbabwe's Community Technology Development Organization and has been working with the UN Food and Agriculture Organization to promote small grains in the country. He says a corner has been turned in the last two years. Precisely because then we are facing challenges of climate change which is quite uh, devastating and which has seen Zimbabwe being a net importer of food rather than export of food. So that really brought a wake-up call for both government and many development partners and civil society organizations to begin to invest in the production and increased utilization of traditional foods. The government hopes that small grains will soon make up at least a third of Zimbabwe's food reserves and that the country can resume exporting surplus food. Columbus Mavungam for VOA News, Mashingo, Zimbabwe.